All right. So um, I come back from Winnipeg, and now we're getting into the actual match. And the funny thing is, I had no idea. I just looked up that October 2nd, 1990 was a Tuesday night, which is a weird night for a wrestling show. But, hey, maybe the Pinocchio Moose Hall was booked for banquets or whatever the hell it is. But, uh, yeah, so it was a Tuesday. And I was living at the time with the Palco family, who was this amazing family that kind of took me in and let me live there. They charged me $10 a day for room and board, 300 bucks a month, which is insane when you think about it. Mrs. Palco, the mom, made three meals a day, and I could eat whatever I wanted. And it was just such a great, great uh, arrangement for me, a godsend. And both Jerry and Bev Palco have passed away. Uh, still very close with their son, Tyler. Uh, he's on the Jericho cruise every year. And it was just one of those uh, amazing setups for me that if I didn't have them, I'm not going to say I wouldn't have made it because I still would have made it, but it wouldn't have been easy for sure. So uh, anyways, uh, it was uh, coming down to the wire of that day. And prior to that, we we're trying to think of names and everyone knows the story, but I like telling it. So like I said, if you're listening, you've heard this before, please uh, indulge me. They wanted, uh, I wanted to, they were trying to think of a name. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? And when I was in high school in my, you know, backyard wrestling federation, my idea was to be Christian Chris Irvin. Cause I was really into striper at the time. I love striper so much. And my idea was I would come to the ring to Rock Rock Till You Drop by Def Leppard. <laughs> I don't know why Christian Chris Irvin wouldn't come to the ring to a Striper song, but I just liked Rock Rock Till You Drop. And I would throw Bibles to the crowd like Striper did. Can you imagine a wrestler throwing Bibles in the crowd? I mean, you turn yourself heel pretty quickly, right? But when I got to wrestling school, I didn't have the... I didn't really want to do the Christian gimmick for the obvious reasons. I didn't really have the conviction to do it either. So I was trying to think of a name, and, and there's, a, there's a Wasp song on the last Command record called Jack Action. And I thought that would be a great name, Jack Action. So you've heard the story before. I was practicing my autograph, which Jack Action, and the end turned into a star like Paul Stanley because Paul Stanley had a star at the end of his autograph. And if you look at the early 2000 WWE merchandise, I signed Chris Jericho with that Paul Stanley star, and they used that signature for the next five years. And I I'd long dropped the Paul Stanley star in my autograph at that point in time. But I was signing Jack Action over and over and over again, and I think Lance happened to see the book that I was signing. He goes, what are you doing? And I said, basically, nothing. I was a little bit like nervous. You never want to tell anybody what your name's going to be. He's like, Jack Action, that's a terrible name. And I was like, of course it's a terrible name. I was never going to call myself that. But had Lance not said that, I might have been Jack Action. The other name I was thinking was Sean Skywalker. But Sean was too close to Sean Michaels, who, of course, was one of my heroes at the time. Sean Michaels, Owen Hart, and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat were my heroes. I tried to emulate them with the moves that I did. And so Sean Skywalker, but then maybe Shane Skywalker, but there was a Shane Douglas, so I didn't know what I wanted to do. Chris Skywalker wouldn't have fit. So Sean Skywalker, Shane Skywalker, Jack Action were all kind of the ideas that I had for my name. And then it was coming down to the wire of what is your name going to be? And once again, Halloween, who I'm going to go see in May in Tampa. I'm so excited. I love Halloween to this day. Uh, has a record called The Walls of Jericho. And I had that cassette in the front seat of my 76 Volari. That's what I drove out to uh, to Calgary from Winnipeg. It's about a 14-hour drive. And the car was what you would call a beater. It was a real beater to the point when I took it in for a 50-point inspection at Canadian Tire before we went on a long road trip about a year later. The mechanic wrote uh, at the time that it failed like a bunch of the different you know, check marks for the 50-point inspection and it had comments at the top and the guy had written get a new and then crossed it out his comment was get a new car right and then decided he didn't want to be mean so anyways i had my 76 Volari, and uh i had the walls of jericho cassette in the front seat and i just saw jericho chris jericho that might be kind of cool and when they asked me what my name was i said chris jericho kind of holding my fingers crossed and both lance and, and ed langley thought it was a great name 
And Lance, who is Lance Evers, chose Lance Storm. And then Ed put the T in the middle. And if you know the, uh, the, 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 the answer to this, what does the T stands for? The T stands for Thunder. And Lance, I think, denies it to this day. But that's what it was. Lance T. Storm was, uh, was his, his name. And the T stands for Thunder. So um, then a couple weeks later, I found out that Bob Puppets and Ed Langley wanted to make me a cowboy. Now, in Calgary, obviously, Stampede, it's a very uh, ranch, cattle farming area. I lived on a farm with the Palcos, so I was doing a little bit of farming at the time, baling hay and, you know, shooting the gophers that were infesting the entire field. Uh, and they had a huge field. It was acres and acres and acres and acres wide and long. And there was some cattle there and some horses. So I was doing all of that sort of stuff because I was basically, or, you know, if I'm going to live there for 10 bucks a day, you got to go do some ranch head stuff. Like when the cows escaped onto the highway, I had to go wrangle them and round them up. So they wanted to make me a cowboy and call me Cowboy Chris Jericho. And I hated that idea because I'm a rocker. I can't be a cowboy. But uh, it was just, I was terrified. You're going to be Cowboy Chris Jericho. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want to be Cowboy Chris Jericho. But then I was like, well, what if I have to do this? And I was trying to think of songs because ring entrance music was always very important to me. You know, it was always, always very important to me. So there's a song by a band called Little Feet, which I think was around in the late 60s. They had a little bit of resurgence in 1990. And they had a song called Texas Twister. And I was thinking, well, if I have to be a cowboy, maybe I'll use this Texas Twister song as, 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 as my country. It wasn't even country. It was more like a rock country song. I'll use that as my ring entrance. And I was just mortified about it. So I remember I called Brett Como. I was like, they want to call me Cowboy Chris Jericho. What am I going to do? And he, typical Como was just like, well, then don't do it. And I was like, I have that choice? Because, yeah, don't do it. So I told Ed Langley I didn't want to be a cowboy. And I was like, can you imagine in this day and age if some kid in his first match – told the promoter, I don't want to do this gimmick. He would have you coming out there with a giant Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber cowboy hat, like the most exaggerated cowboy ever. But they're like, okay, well, if you don't want to be a cowboy, then don't be a cowboy. That was kind of the first example before my first match of me kind of always standing up for myself, which got me a lot of heat over the years, especially when I first got to WWE. People thought I was like hard to work with because I just would stand up for what I believed in, which I still do. And uh, so... <laughs> Uh, I was not Cowboy Chris Jericho, and if you, if you see the program, which I'll post, I posted on Instagram a few weeks ago, or, or this week, shall I say, and you can see that I was billed from Casper, Wyoming. Uh, Casper with a K, because I guess uh, Bob Puppets, whoever wrote the pro- program, <laughs> didn't quite realize uh, that uh, you spell Casper with a C, but if people want to know what 